like literally like you're having a conversation with a person that is not going to go out right and blab all your business to the world or post everything on social media like you have a safe space to be able to express yourself in some way and to be able to work through those issues so i want to say to everyone that is suffering in silence in one particular way uh you no longer have to do that you no longer have to be able to suffer alone in any way take an opportunity to be able to seek help knowing that there are folks out there that are experiencing exactly what it is that you are experiencing but there are even more people that are willing to be able to help you through this so please take an opportunity whether it is through your support system right uh, whether those are people, places, or things that are positive and being able to express yourself, please just do that because it is better than being able to just remain silent and continue to suffer in some way. Hey, 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 Entre Leaders, happy Wednesday and welcome to another episode of the Leaders Lab podcast. We are continuing on in our mini series entitled Black Men Making Moves. And today I have another very special guest with us. This is Mr. Jaron J.D. Doby. He is currently credentialed as a licensed clinical social worker with more than 14 years of experience in the mental health field. He is a native of Greensboro, North Carolina, and he attended the University of North Carolina at Greensboro, where he earned his undergraduate degree in psychology and a master's in social work from the Joint Master Program of Social Work at North Carolina Agricultural and Technical State University and the University of North Carolina at Greensboro. Jaron currently practices as an outpatient mental health therapist Jaron is credentialed to provide clinical supervision to both LCSW and mental health counselor associates that are seeking full licensure in the state of North Carolina. Jaron is also a passionate public speaker who also serves as a mental health correspondent for various news or media outlets in North Carolina. So we have a professional on the show today. <laughs> we have a professional on the show today with us. And uh, he's appeared on various news outlets and publications and podcasts that include, but are not limited to, ABC, CBS, Fox, NBC, um, Spectrum News, Charlotte Magazine, the Charlotte Observer, the Charlotte Post, and the Greensboro News and Record. As a proud member of the Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated, Jaron continues to serve his local community and abroad. Jaron is the founder of the Brandon Dwight Blue Memorial Scholarship, where he provides aid to high school seniors at his alma mater, James B. Dudley High School in Greensboro, North Carolina, that are pursuing a college education. Jaron is also the co-founder of Transcend Resource Solutions, LLC, an organization driven to spread awareness surrounding mental health and educational disparities within the community. And so without further ado, you see the type of black man making moves on today that we have with us in our company. Without further ado, I want to bring on our special guest today, Mr. Jaron J.D. Doby. Welcome to the Leaders Lab podcast, sir. Oh, my goodness. Dr. Charity Campbell. I am honored, really honored to be able to be here with you to be able to do this on your platform. This is amazing. I've been watching you very closely. I'm, wow. I'm just honored for the invite. Thank you so much for having me. Well, thank you. I mean, I got a, I got a celebrity up here. You know, we got some Fox and CBS and NBC and ABC and all the others. I mean, this is wow. So we actually know each other from UNCG. We went to we went to school together. Shout out to all our fellow Spartans here. That's right. That's uh, right. <laughs> and um, we worked together. We actually worked together with um, doing a. It was a mini documentary series that um that i believe it was um between the alphas and there were also some there were also some deltas that were on the trip as well we went to we went to uh washington dc mm -hmm. yeah yeah um yeah, that, yes so tell tell the people a little bit about what we did when when we were 
like, oh my God, it seems like it was forever. Like, it seems like it was so long ago. Right, right. It was the uh, from NC to DC uh, documentary. It was definitely uh, being able to very much so well document um, the presidential election of uh, Mr. Barack Obama. Um, it was actually yeah. uh, a, a documentary series that was uh, put together by a great friend uh, and brother of mine, Zaron Johnson. Um, and yeah. he took the opportunity to put everybody together and assemble a, a team to be able to do this. Um, we ultimately were able to take all of the footage and make a presentation um, to the uh, the Civil Rights Museum uh, yeah. uh, downtown Greensboro and actually have the documentary uh, archived um, as a part of history. So, I mean, it was an amazing thing that it is that we did. And just to look back at it now and to see how far everyone has come since then, like it is, gosh, it was so long ago, but I mean, yes. just such a meaningful experience and the people that we touched and, and interviewed from children to adults. I mean, it was, it was just an amazing yeah. experience. Yeah. And to be there and shout out to Zaron. Yes. That's my that's my other brother from another mother. He is the reason why we all got connected. Right. And um, I was actually in my master's program at that time with new media journalism. So he was like, we need you. <laughs> I right. was like, what you mean, Z? What you mean, Zaron? He's like, we need you. You know you want to be a part of history. Right. And so I just, I, I love it. I love it. And And then we all just connected and had a great bond moving forward. And like you said, it is... It is amazing to just look back and see how far everyone has come since then and everything that we're doing. I mean, first of all, you are in mental health. Mm -hmm. You are you are a black man. Let's just let's just make sure we, we, we set the record straight for those of you who are listening to the audio uh, to the audio version of the podcast. Uh, Mr. Doby, we, we call him J.D., yes. uh, he he is a black man in mental health and i'm like that is it's so necessary but it's rare i feel like it's rare why did you choose the mental health field well to be honest with you i i actually found myself in mental health by default i'll give you the short version of the story i actually went to uncg initially um as a music major um, had great wow. aspirations. I had already had a, a, a pretty successful, thriving music career prior to coming to UNCG. Um, a lot of folks mm -hmm. knew and some didn't. Um, I was actually a part of Sons of Steel. It's a traveling uh, uh, instrumental steel drum group. Uh, we did a lot yeah. of uh, uh, touring, opened up for Lauren Hill, Jimmy Buffett. Um, oh my gosh, uh, Bob Marley's Whalers Band. I mean, we, we did a lot of great shows um, mm -hmm. and, and traveled a lot. So I came to UNCG. And to be quite honest with you, I really got tired of playing like Bach and Beethoven every day <laughs> out there. <laughs> and so like, literally I was like, I, I, I can do music on my own. What, what else do I like? I was taking a psychology class at the time and I really, really enjoyed it. And so I was like, you know what, wow. let me delve into this. I, I had to get the gab, um, took the opportunity to be a good listener, right? And I was like, you know what? I care about other people. I care about my community, of course, being an active contributor, uh, of course, to my community and abroad. And so I was like, you know what? Let's make sure that we go into this a little bit. And that's how I ended up like actively in mental health and um, took an opportunity to get my first shot at mental health uh, from a really great friend of mine, of uh, my family. Her name is Sonia Desai, very well known um, in the community in relation to her, uh, her community work here in North Carolina. And she took an opportunity to call me as a new graduate, Dr. Campbell, and said, hey, got a job at a mental health agency. It's not much, but wow. it's a foot in the door. And I said, wow. you know what? I'll take it. And, and we just ran with it from there. Wow. Now, um, so how, how many years have you been in the field of mental health? And you, I guess you can, you can also count your schooling because education is a part of, you know, the, the experience. So, right. Right. Total um, with school, I would say it's probably about, yeah, like 18 years um, wow. in total, a little, wow. a little over 18 years, uh, j just eclipsing that a little bit. So it's it's been a very long time. And and when I when I say I started from humble beginnings, I say I started from humble beginnings. That, that mental health job that I took, it was actually a receptionist slash intake job that I took. So I would, wow. I would open up the building, the mental health agency. I would 
pour coffee, like be, do that in the morning, right? Check in patients. And then partially throughout my day, I would do intakes, right? Folks that were looking to be able to uh, be paired with services. I would collect their information, make sure I get their background and things of that nature. And I knew that once I got my foot in that door in that particular agency, that I would prove my worth, right? That I would mm. prove that I would be able to do more things and put my talent in some more areas. And I was promoted very quickly within that company. And I mean, the desire came for more though. It's like, I want to be able to do more. And I noticed all the clinicians around and uh, the owner of that agency, Dr. Campbell, God rest his soul, he ended up passing. And before he passed, he actually brought me into his office. He said, JD, I see some great things in you. Have you ever thought about a degree in social work? And I was like, well, if you're going to be a counselor, right? Naturally, you should get a degree in counseling. Sat down with me, Dr. Campbell, and just like literally went through like pros and cons of both. I ultimately ended up choosing social work and I never looked back. I mean, the best decision of my life, literally. Wow. So, so when you, now was this, was this person that spoke to you, was he also a black male? No, he was not actually. Um, the, the owner of the agency at that time was actually a white male. Um, I, to be honest with you in mental health, having black male mentors at that time, especially when I was younger, they were unheard of. I was I was like in, in the ranks and being there, I would say I was maybe one of three black males that actually worked at this particular agency, to be honest with you. And many of them, of course, were in different roles, but no one necessarily mm -hmm. was in the therapist role until later. Right. And growing in my career okay. that I did. So there wasn't anybody that I knew that looked like me that was like actively thriving in this particular uh, you know, field. And so I had to fill this thing out. I, I really had to fill it out and take an opportunity, to, opportunity, excuse me, to really identify if I really love this. And mm. I, I stuck in it for the long haul because I have a great passion for working with people. So most of the um, now I, I know you do a lot in the community. Um, mm. You've actually done a lot in the community always. <laughs> I mean, that's you know, that's even before you went into this field um that was one of the mm -hmm. things that i really admired about all of you guys um mm -hmm. that i met when we when we started working on the documentary um is that you all had this like this heart and this passion for true community service it wasn't like oh i'm a part of a fraternity so i have to do it it was like mm -hmm. i literally saw you all willingly give back um and and so Serving the community is something that I feel like has probably always been a part of you. Yes. What has um, been maybe your your greatest achievement mm -hmm. so far when it comes with um, serving your community in mental health? Has it you know do you do you notice that you actually um, you're received more by young black men who need mental health services, or mm -hmm. or is it just you know just everybody mm -hmm. no, no matter the race? Got you. T to be quite honest with you, um, there have been a lot of great moments in my career. Uh, just okay. thinking about them, to be honest with you, a lot of them make me very, very much so emotional because, I mean, mental okay. health is one of those things that is just a, a, a constant battle for a lot of people. And you literally insert yourself into people's lives, you know, in some way in order to be able wow. to help them and to better them in some way like that. That is a huge undertaking. Like, it really is. I would just say like the greatest accomplishment in my career has been to just uh, aid in being able to uh, diminish or eliminate the stigma surrounding mental health in the African-American community. You know, um, th that is something that's very, very much so important to me, a personal mission of mine, because, of course, there are stigmas attached to it. Right. Yeah. And uh, in, in the African-American community and amongst different cultures as well. Right. Um, including yeah. other people of color. And so like me being a black man, like present in these spaces and being able to say, hey, it is OK to be able to uh, to enter into this space and be vulnerable and being able to do that to to both men and women alike. Right. And young children. Um, mm -hmm. like it's not anything that I take for granted and, and being able to just, you know, help eliminate that stigma um, will, will always be, I feel, within this field, my greatest accomplishment. I don't think it gets any greater than that. You know, one of the things that um, that I I am proud of is when seeing people in our community now accepting uh, it's, it's like we're, we're normalizing the need for mental health and for self-care, you know, especially growing up um, 
growing up in a black community and in, in black homes, you know, it, for our black men, for them to express emotion, you know, in a form to like to cry or to anything like that, it's like, mm -hmm. man up, you know, <laughs> like man Not up or, or, you know, don't, don't do that. And then we wonder why our, our young kings have so much anger and frustration and they don't know how to release it. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I, I love the fact that now saying that I see a mental health counselor or I have a, you know, I go to a therapist um, or I see a therapist is not something that is, you know, frowned upon. Mm -hmm. um, how, I, this is a question I'm not sure, I'm not sure how to ask it or, or what your answer might be, but do you, th do you think that um, receiving mental health has now become like a trend? You know, because I, I see stuff like hashtag, you know, uh, see my therapist, hashtag self care mm -hmm. all day, every day, like all of these things. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I understand that we now we now know the importance of it. But yes. do you think that it's become like a trend? Hmm. Well, to, to be honest with you, I'm a fine believer, especially in the in the world of mental health, that there isn't any kind of thing, uh, any no such thing, excuse me, as bad publicity. Whether it is okay. trendy or not, this is getting the conversation going. It is normalizing therapy, mental health therapy. I like, love it. There is no complaint uh, from me as a clinician as it relates to that. It, it is on literally like global platforms being discussed every day, every day mm -hmm. from, from hashtags to interviews to more podcasts. Right. And I mean, just more eyeballs and ears like within this subject. And that is great, you know, and a lot of, and you do hear that a lot. Like, oh, well, it, it seems to be very trendy right now, but being able mm. to get help as it relates to, uh, to your mental status in any particular way, whether it is a trend or not, people are actively making sure that they're going after uh, improving uh, their mental health in a lot of different ways. And, and it's really hard to be able to complain about that. So I think that it's great that there is so much of a conversation about it and people are openly saying that they are going to therapy. I mean, really think about that. Like times have yeah. changed where like some people would never say that. Why? Right. Because what does it look like in our community? Oh, you're crazy or so something is wrong with Weakness. you. Weakness. Yeah. Yes, yes. The, mm. Being weak or being vulnerable or no, I don't want to go to a shrink, right? Or a head doctor to be manipulated in any particular yeah. way. Like, all these things surrounding it. And, and just, I mean, every single solitary day, those walls are just coming down. And, and that is amazing. It is amazing to be a part of it. Um, it is amazing to be able to contribute in some particular way, but it's just great to see. I mean, it truly is. I love it. So are there more black men now becoming clinicians or mental health therapists or, you know, do you see more black men taking on roles in the mental health field now since you've been, you know, you've been in the mental health field now for about 18 years. So mm -hmm. how, you know, is, are there, is there more of a representation now or is there still a need? Yeah, yes, um, there is more representation. I, I definitely um, uh, know plenty of black male therapists, myself personally. Um, we're mm -hmm. definitely present and, and our presence is growing. Um, I mean, to be honest with you, like the mental health field is still a, a female dominated industry, to be quite honest yeah. with you. But, you know, like I said, it is good that we're having like black male providers that are being able to show up and, and making sure, of course, that, you know, other black men, other black females, things that like other people of color, right, are, are comfortable in being able to walk in, right, and see someone that looks like them or, or naturally yeah. makes them feel like they can relate. Now, I don't want to equate the two, right? Just because that someone is black, right? That they're just automatically going to get you. Like it, it's right. all, it always takes being uh, very much so like culturally competent, no matter who mm. it is that you are dealing with, right? And taking an opportunity to honestly build rapport. Like it just doesn't mean you're black, I'm black, this is going to be great, right? Because right. Just right. because there is a matter of ability doesn't always mean that there's a matter of fit, right? But mm. having us present in these rooms now, I mean, it's, it's, it's exciting and, and it's bringing more people in in order to be able to get help. Like we're, we're changing lives, we're, we're changing futures. And, and, and I definitely do not take that for granted whatsoever. I love it. You, you basically said that ability doesn't equate to suitability. Mm -hmm. You know, just because just because you have an ability to to meet with this client doesn't mean that you're actually going to be suitable for that client. It doesn't mean that you're going to be a great fit. So I love that. Um, so, well, then 
now here's a question. I'm not trying to be controversial. I just want to ask what, what are some of the big issues or mistakes that you mm -hmm. see being made in mental health? Got you. Um, as a social worker, uh, I, I do not take that title very lightly. Um, right. My education, uh, my professors, my program, the industry have very much so drilled into us that we are just not providers, right, uh, to be able to provide mental health counseling in any particular way or diagnose a person. Um, we also carry the great responsibility of social justice and social change, right? Advocating, honestly, for uh, any kind of wrongdoing or making sure that we uh, very much so hold true to ethical practices. And mm. that is making sure that we keep a heartbeat on things that are going well. And of course, the things that are not also. Um, there's a lot of uh, what I would say within the industry. A lot of times folks, they get misdiagnosed. Um, that happens a lot, honestly, to be uh, very much so straightforward in the African-American community in different ways. Why? Because, I mean, ultimately, it comes down to being culturally competent. If a provider yeah. is not very much so culturally competent, of, and it doesn't matter what background you're definitely from, being able to, to then, it's, then at that time determine someone's behaviors to look like something that is naturally not yeah. but it's like culturally acceptable for them in some way could lead to a diagnosis that it does not necessarily fit what it is that they are going through. Um, wow. Also, I, I had the opportunity to speak uh, as a keynote not too long ago about um, being able to make sure that we're flipping the script on mental health and making sure that we're paying attention. Um, my, uh, uh, dare I say, charge during that particular speech was to, to every single solitary professional in the room at that time to be able to say, hey, look, we have to be able to do our part, right, to go above and beyond to make sure that we are not further contributing, right, to the ongoing mental and behavioral problems of the communities that we are serving. Right. Because That's we good. are tired or because we don't want to deal with this particular person because of how it is that they behave or look, I, I, I'm, I'm busy enough. Someone else can take care of that. Like, mm. no, there are children that are suffering every day. There are grown men and women that are suffering every day because someone does not want to take the opportunity to really do their best in being able to serve them in some way or just want to get by or, you know, performing unethical practices in some way. So we really have to make sure that we're holding each other accountable right but also make sure that we understand one thing we're talking about someone's life here like that that is exactly. not to be toyed with or played with so it, it is exactly. it is definitely once again i mean i think the theme is just making sure taking things seriously and i take that very seriously you it's interesting that you mentioned uh the mig not uh the misdiagnoses that that many of our children Mm -hmm. You know, get and they grow up as adults thinking that, you know, or or having, ha, you know, having it, prescribing medicine mm -hmm. to treat mm -hmm. a diagnosis that isn't even, you know, that doesn't even exist within the person. Um, and that can actually cause even more damage in the long run, mm -hmm. because, I mean, you're you're literally pumping your system, especially as a child. You're putting all of these chemicals and things into your system to help to balance or regulate things that are just your emotions, right. like, you don't, you know, it's, it's needing to have an outlet. Mm -hmm. Um, and so what are some, uh, some ways that you would suggest basically, mm -hmm. like, what are your recommendations for anyone? I, I don't want to just say young men mm -hmm. because we actually have, we also have like some young women who right. don't know how to express themselves. Um, just depending on their background, their childhood, how they were raised. What are some effective, healthy ways mm -hmm. to express your emotions as a mental health therapist, you know, as a clinician? What mm -hmm. do you think are some of the best ways to be able to express yourself and manage your emotions? I, right. hope, I hope that question comes out like, oh, <laughs> like clear enough because I had yeah. it one way in my mind and it came out another way. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I mean, to be honest with you, I, I think that you asked it very well. I mean, it really depends on the person. Dr. Campbell, I mean, mm, it, it definitely okay. does. Like uh, the expression of emotions and feelings are not one size fits all. <clears throat> I say that as often wow. as we can. So it's, it's not that like there's always a proper way for you to be able to express yourself. There may be a way that you express yourself, right? That is healthy for you that like I don't like to express myself that particular way. 
that this is mm. why we have to make sure that we're patient and we have to be able to build rapport with the people that it is that we are talking to on a daily basis because yes. you may easily misinterpret the way that someone is right being able to express themselves now right there is a difference in being like confrontational in a lot of different ways right elevating your voice right body language posturing things that language use right that we do have to take an opportunity to model right and teach mm -hmm. notice that i said model like we cannot necessarily uh, address an issue or uh, give somebody like fire. Basically, you can't fight fire with fire. Right. You right, have to be right. able to model. Right. What it does look like to properly in a lot of different ways, positively communicate. Right. Yeah. And being able to teach it as a uh, take it as a learning experience. So like being able to provide that psycho education, like goes a very long way in making sure that folks are able to understand, OK, this is how I've gone about expressing myself. It may be problematic to other people or even to me. Um, so let's take an opportunity to learn some ways to be able to correct that into which they feel most comfortable, not how I feel you should be most comfortable. One of the things that you said that that was it just hit me it hit mm -hmm. me so hard was the way we have to be patient because the way someone else expresses their emotions um doesn't have to be the same way that we express ours and we can't look at them and say oh something must really be wrong with you mm -hmm. um because they express themselves differently i know it sounds like it, it's so it's like it's common sense but many times we forget that we need to have common sense when we see someone else who is um, they're hurting, you know, or, or they're hiding the hurt, uh, especially strong leaders. You know, I, that's one of the things that I, I tell people quite often um, in our sessions. I say, listen, just because you have a friend that is strong, it doesn't mean they're not hurting. They can come to work all the time smiling. They can encourage you and everything. But on the inside, they're dying. So what so what about that person? What about the strong person who feels like they you know, everyone relies on them all the time. Mm -hmm. What about that strong, that strong black man yeah. who like has to hold up his family? Mm -hmm. He has to, you know, maintain his, he has to keep up with his colleagues. You know, he, maybe he serves in the community, does something else. And he has a lot mm -hmm. of pressure on him to be successful, mm -hmm. but he may not feel like he has a, a, a good way to express himself when he is um, feeling emotional. What would you say to him? Like, how, how would you help him if he was sitting mm -hmm. in your office? Right. What would you say to that strong black man? Mm -hmm. Well, I just want to take an opportunity to, to, to speak to all the strong black men uh, uh, out there that are taking an opportunity to, to watch this and consume this content right now. I just want to be able to normalize that for you, right? Like, you're, 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 it is, uh, you are not the only one that is being able to go through this or experience that. Now, I don't say that to be able to diminish, right, your experience or mm. diminish how it is that you are feeling. I'm saying that there, you know, there are people that are going through the exact same thing that you are. So you're not alone because there can be a sense of being isolated, right? Exile, being on an island by yourself when you're kind of doing all of these things, right? I and mean, ultimately burning the candle on both, both ends. It's, it's very much so important to be able to recognize, right? when everything that it is that you are doing is starting to be able to cause more harm than good, right? Or affect you in some way negatively. It's okay to be able to seek help. It is okay to be able to speak with the professional because ultimately at the end of the day, the best thing about therapy is that everything is strictly confidential. Like literally, like you're having a conversation with a person that is not going to go out, right? And blab all of your business to the world or post everything on social media. Like you have a safe, space to be able to express yourself in some way and to be able to work through those issues. So I want to say to everyone that is suffering in silence in one particular way, uh, you no longer have to do that. You no longer have to be able to suffer alone in any way. Take an opportunity to be able to seek help, knowing that there are folks out there that are experiencing exactly what it is that you are experiencing, but there are even more people that are willing to be able to help you through this. So please take an opportunity, whether it is through your support system, right? Uh, whether those are people, places, or things that are positive and being able to express yourself, please just do that because it is better than being able to just remain silent and continue to suffer in some way. What do you think about uh, people who, who say that uh, mental health for men is like a source of emasculation? Like, mm. you know, for, for a man to need 
uh, mental health or for a man to need therapy, um, that it's a, it's, it's a form of emasculation, you know, like, oh, you're weak. You know, oh, you're not, you're not as strong as you think you are. Like, come on, man, we don't do that. We don't go to therapy. We really? don't, go, you know, we, <laughs> we, we, you know, we handle our problems other ways. Mm -hmm. But what would you say to, um, not just to that black man, but to mm -hmm. our culture? What right. would you say to our culture to help educate us to to let them know that listen, this is not about emasculation or mm -hmm. you know. What what are your thoughts on that? And what would you say about that? Right. And, and I laugh because I have had this conversation countless amounts of time. I continue to have this okay. conversation. It, it is important to be able to have this conversation. Why? Because there are men that honestly feel that way. Like, look, man, mm. being able to sit down and talk about my feelings, like what? But see, that's the thing, though. We have to remember that this is not just an idea that they just thought of in the moment. Like, being able to have those kinds of ideals, morals, values, understanding about the expression of emotions, that starts like when you are a child, right? Mm. I mean, really honestly think about it, Dr. Campbell. Like think about the stereotypes of like young men and young women when we're growing up, right? As as you mentioned and you alluded to earlier, right? Like young boys, you fall, you hit your knee, right? Oh no, toughen up, toughen up, don't cry, right? Yeah, man up. <laughs> you are learning already not to express any kind of emotion. Right. And yeah. in a particular way, that is something that is being like bred into young men and young women every single solitary day. Like we have to be able to do better as as parents, as family members, as supports in some way and being able to, to normalize the expression of feelings. Like we have to be able to do that no, no, no matter what your race, color, creed, sex is like it is OK to be able to express yourself. But that's the thing that happens. Like th these are like uh overlapping um ideals that are kind of sticking with folks and you know they're continuing to be able to feel that way so it's important that when we hear folks say things like that that we engage in those conversations to be able to mm -hmm. to show that you know what like being able to not express your feelings can actually be more harmful to you in, in a lot of different ways and you know what it is a great sign of, of being securing yourself and securing your manhood and being able to just talk about how it is that you feel Right. Like that. That is OK. And, and I am definitely uh, personally on a mission and I, and I have that that conversation with folks. I mean, as often as possible. And I won't stop having the conversation. You just brought up a, a, the, the, the concept of security, mm -hmm. security um, in in the basically expressing yourself. What, what, mm -hmm. Could you expand a little bit more on on being secure? You said, you know, you're being secure in, is that in who you are as a, as a man or who like expand on that? Yes. I mean, just being, I mean, it's overarching being secure as to who it is that you are as a person. I, I think that a lot of times uh, uh, folks come and see me and they feel like that they need to fit into a box of what a man mm. should be or what a woman should be or what an executive wow. should be or what a child should be, what a celebrity should like li literally feeling like that they have to be able to abide by these unwritten rules and ideals of, of how it is that they should conduct themselves and express themselves. Wow. And it's like, look, be who it is that you truly would like to be. I, I tell folks all the time, like, I am not here to be able to change you to the version of yourself that I feel like is best for you. I want you to be wow. able to leave my office being the best version that you desire to be. That, that that's wow. important, right? That we stick to the true essence of what someone actually desires to improve, change, or address about themselves and not manipulate that in any particular way. So that, that's what I would say in the element of security. You know, just even if you don't know in the beginning as to who it is you would like to be or or what you would like to be able to, to look like ultimately at the end of the day, it is something that can actively come out in processing, right? all of that you don't have to have all the answers up front but with time mm -hmm. those things will come and and everybody has a different timeline right so the comparison of timelines is a whole different conversation you know what i mean dr campbell like i mean it truly is you know so we have to be careful with that as well listen no you just you just went you just took it there i'm gonna yeah. go ahead because i talk to people all the time about not comparing because we live in a, a, a comparison culture 
Yes. If you think about it, I mean, we live in a comparison culture. That's why we that's why we love social media. We like to look at all the good things that people post on social media. Mm -hmm. You know, we we see their their highlights, but we don't actually see the behind the scenes footage of, of their everyday life. And, and then we begin to compare and that does affect our, it affects our emotional state of, uh, state of being. It mm -hmm. affects, um, just so many different areas of our lives. Mm -hmm. And so when you have someone, when you have an executive, because mm -hmm. you know, this is the leaders lab podcast. So we, we, we train leaders from the, from young and we, we, we care for leaders and train leaders as they are, um, as they are right now. And even mm -hmm. we have, you know, people who are, far far older than we are mm -hmm. that listen to the leaders lab podcast so i want to shout out to all of my veterans we'll call them veterans thank you so right. much for tuning in but um what would you say to to our comparison culture mm -hmm. that causes you know i mean it's i even i have to get myself together sometime okay mm -hmm. i'm just gonna be honest mm -hmm. i'm all gonna be honest with 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 my audience but even i sometimes have to get myself together because mm -hmm. you know we can go online and we'll see things and you can be living the most amazing life you can be doing just like you know mr doby said you know to be the best version that you want to be not the best version that he wants you to be or society mm -hmm. wants you to be mm -hmm. and there is a lot of pressure there is a lot of pressure that comes from our social media, yes. you know, who we follow on social media to keep up. It ain't even keeping up with the Joneses anymore. It's just keeping up with everybody. That's you know, <laughs> it's, it's a lot of pressure to perform or to be mm -hmm. like, you know, a certain certain way. First of all, this this question is twofold. One, mm -hmm. have you felt pressure mm -hmm. to be successful as a black man based on what you've seen others do? Mm -hmm. Right. Um, that's right. the first question. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. To, well, to be honest with you, like I, 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 there's a human element, right, to me as well. Okay. Like I am a professional, but I'm also a human. Um, I, I would say mm. that yes. Before in the past, I definitely had experienced that. You know, like when you're growing up, and, and with the boom of social media, everybody putting their life basically like out there for everyone to be able to see. It's like that is something that can do it. Um, and being able to say, well gosh, you know, I really need to like get on myself and, and, and why am I not doing these kinds of things and, and being able to, mm -hmm. to make those improvements. Um, I will say this, I want to say that I, I, I saw Dr. Campbell an interview that Kevin Hart did. Um, and this is very important where he took okay. an opportunity where he would like, he would run into like, of course, his other uh, friends and things of that nature. And he would hear about the wonderful things that they were doing. And he would never say to himself, like, man, like I'm not really doing much he would literally take that as a challenge to himself to say, Kevin, like, if you really desire to do something, take an opportunity to be able to do it. If you're going to be like looking at other people's lives and seeing what they're doing, number one, we need to celebrate other people more. Like we yes. really need to do, like it really takes like a man or woman to stand and cheer while another fellow stars. Like it really does. Like to see Come on. other people doing well, like that literally brings genuine joy to my heart. Like it really yeah. does where other folks, yeah. you know, like I said, may, may feel differently about that. Right. Like yeah. kind of have some kind of animosity or or hate. Yeah. Right. As, as it's commonly known. But I, I mean, take an opportunity to champion and celebrate other people, like lift them up. And, and to be able to make sure also that you're taking an opportunity to keep pushing forward in, in your own desires, like use it as motivation. That don't take an opportunity to use it in any way as something as you're trying to tear somebody else down or refusing to support them, hoping, right, that they don't uh, garner any additional success. Um, that's not going to be anything that is best for you. So I would say ultimately, like, I mean, it is a two way street, but you, ha you have to be able to, to do the work because everybody, right, wants the, the success, right, and everything that comes with that. But no one wants to put the work in. You, you have to be able to put the work in, like keep your yeah. head down and stay on the grind. Like that is important. Like seriously, stay on the grind and, and, and that success will come to you. It, mo it most certainly will. Just don't quit. Don't ever quit. I love that. I love that. Um, especially you said that uh, we need to learn to celebrate other people's success because when someone else wins, it doesn't mean that you're losing, basically. Yes. You know, that's, that's a word. why that's do a word. we, why do we think that? Why do we think seeing someone else's success and them winning 
and it's like you said the hate right or the animosity mm -hmm. why is it is there something is there a trigger something in our minds that say oh well they just want or you know they just did this or they did that or if it's someone in the same field you know mm -hmm. they oh they just got all of these clients now there are no other clients left for you like you know why is that our default why is that negative that negative self-talk mm. that when someone else wins mm -hmm. we lose what why do you, as a professional, I'm asking you as a professional, why right. do you think that happens? Right. I mean, to be quite honest with you, it's just the human element of people, ultimately, mm. right? Being able to take an opportunity just to see other people doing well and things of that nature. Like, yes, there, there is a certain level of, dare I say, like competition in all of us. It is. Mm. But there is a such thing as healthy competition. Like, ultimately, at the end of the day, my these big huge brand like restaurants and things of that nature when one garnered uh, a, a lot of success do you think that those other restaurants or like the smaller restaurants in cities towns states wherever it is that you may take an opportunity to live said well i guess we shouldn't serve food or cook it anymore right <laughs> like they're they're doing all of it and everybody's going to go there no because everyone has different tastes everyone has different desires like there's yeah. always room for you in the industry that it is that you want to be successful in, but you have to know it. You have to know it and, and you really have to take an opportunity just to go for it. Like, like effort is what it is that it ultimately takes at the end of the day. Like how, what does the word say? Faith without works is dead. I'm a fond believer without works of that. Is Come like, on. I'm a fond believer of that. But but you have to really take an opportunity not just to say those words, but you have to live by them also. Like you have yeah. to remain faithful, right? But you have to put one foot in front of the other, knowing that your faith will lead you to that end goal that you desire so much. Oh, it, it will, it will. Just stay encouraged, stay encouraged. You just said a whole lot. That was a mini sermon. I wanna let you know that right now. Uh, Reverend JD, <laughs> <laughs> that, that was a min, no, seriously, I, I love it. I love it. Um, Wow. I felt like, I mean, I know you were talking to them, but I felt like you were talking to me right, because, right. you know, some, sometimes we get so caught up in the pressure of the grind before the grind even begins. It's the mental pressure, the mental buildup of thinking, you know, I'm gonna be honest. Okay. Sometimes just sitting down and planning out a series or sitting down and planning out a goal. Mm -hmm. I haven't even started doing, you know, doing it yet. Sometimes it's just, it's an idea. And yes. I allow the idea because it's so vast. Mm -hmm. I allow the idea to to challenge me in such a way that I don't even want to do it. It's just like, mm -hmm. okay, that's like mentally, I can't fathom it. So physically, it's going to mm -hmm. be even more challenging. Um, sure. How would you, if I came into your office and I was like, you know what, mm -hmm. Mr. Doby, I, I just, I can't do it. It's too much pressure. It's too much mental pressure for right. me to even begin the works. I have mm -hmm. the faith, but the faith is scaring me. Mm -hmm. You know, the faith is scaring me. Yeah. So how do I, how do I get over that and go, you know, how do I get over that and, and, and still continue mm -hmm. to do the work? Mm -hmm. Well, I, I want to, I really want to talk about this because this is something that I, that I'm very passionate about too. My intrusive okay. thoughts, right? Really, really mm. think about that. Intru intrusive thoughts. A lot of times yeah. folks will psych themselves out of a situation before it even happens. But but th but there's that word intrusive. Makes me think of intruder, right? And I yes. asked that from Dr. Campbell, like, for instance, right now you and I are having this conversation. If someone yeah. walked into that room that you're in right now, you've never seen them before, never met them, they never announced themselves that they were coming, and they just came and sat down in there likely what would you do you would honestly take an opportunity to have them get up out of there you got to get out of here like i don't know you take the you take opportunity indeed <laughs> that's right look you got to get out and you would do anything to get out to keep yourself safe right and your home safe right but we have to remember that your mental state right and your in your headspace is your home as well those intrusive thoughts are intruders right they are not <laughs> invited to be able to stay there in any way. So guess what? When we take an opportunity to, to believe th those intrusive thoughts or to not address them in any way, guess what we're doing? We're giving those intruders permission to be able to set up camp in our homes. No, we need to be able to treat them, treat those intrusive thoughts like real intruders. You have to do everything that you can to actively work to eliminate them 
in some particular way. So I, I love being able to utilize that strategy uh, with my patients and clients. I mean, they, they love it. Why? Because, I mean, it really brings it home for them. I mean, literally, no pun intended. So just like you will protect your physical home, right, from an intruder, make sure that you protect your mental home from intrusive thoughts or intruders as well. Let me tell you something here. You just took it all the way to church for the people. You hear me? <laughs> <laughs> like He said you have to protect your mental home. That's right. That's you right. have to, and and I honestly believe, you know, that's that's where we have uh, self care, mm -hmm. self care. No yes. matter your race, no matter your religion, no matter self care is so important, especially yes. if you are in a leadership position. Um, it, it's so important because most of the time, what we do is we get so busy mm -hmm. caring for others that we forget to refill ourselves. And then we start pouring into others while we're empty. Mm. And while we're pouring empty, empty help, empty provision, you know, mm -hmm. empty, it's just empty promises, empty everything into other people. Mm -hmm. We start to, we start to not only just feel the pressure of mm -hmm. the thing that we're so, it's, it's, it's terrible when you start feeling pressure from your passion, Yo, you know, is is terrible when you start feeling pressure from your passion. That should be an indicator like, you know, when the, when the gas light turns on, it's like, yo, you need to go fill up. Mm -hmm. That should be an indicator to fill up. So let me, let me ask you, have you, have you ever felt pressure from your passion in the, men in the field of mental health? Yes. I mean, to be quite honest with you, like ve very early in my career and from time to time, you know, being a black man in this space, uh, it's not mm. anything that it is that I take for granted. I know that every time that I take an opportunity to make an appearance of some kind, or to speak to other people, right? That I'm not only representing myself, I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. representing my profession. I'm representing my community. Yeah. Like I, I'm representing my family, like my, my friends. Like I, I'm representing so much in that moment, but it's not anything that I choose to run from, right? That is mm -hmm. a lot of pressure. Mm -hmm. and, and, a, and a person can fold or crumble under that pressure. But it is important to be able to know that ultimately, like we as human beings, we are very much so resilient and determined, like be mm. determined in, in, in your purpose and, and be passion driven and knowing that, you know what, you deserve to be there. And if your heart is in the right place, knowing that you're doing it for the right reasons, like you can do no wrong, uh, particularly in that yeah. space. So really make sure that you, I mean, internalize that, like literally internalize that, knowing what it is that you're representing, knowing that, you know, your your face, your efforts in any particular way are not going to go unnoticed. You're going to be able to encourage somebody that sees you, hears you, or encourage a person that encourages the next. Like, I'm a fine believer, Dr. Kimball, that we're all dominoes. Like we literally mm. are. And, and just taking an opportunity to impact one another, and the 10th domino will never know about the first, right? In any particular way. But just knowing that that impact is one that just, I mean, carries on to other folks is something that is very much so powerful. So just don't be, don't forget that folks, please don't forget that. I love it. This, this whole segment has just been giving me life and also <laughs> great insight, great insight into the, the necessity of mental health. And you, you just, you were you you mentioned a few really good um characteristics like determination and mm. and um, a few others as a leader in the mental health field mm -hmm. what is one characteristic that you believe that every leader no matter mm -hmm. if it's the mental health field or if it's education mm -hmm. uh if it's management if it's you know music what is one characteristic that you believe that every leader should possess Mm -hmm. I feel like that ultimately, and uh, I am very, very thankful uh, that I'm a product of a, 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 of a praying mother and a praying father, mm. but they mm -hmm. taught me uh, that you always need to have humility. Every mm. leader needs to make sure that in some particular way that they have humility. Don't mm -hmm. ever end up walking with kings and losing the common touch. You know what I mean? Like we have to take an opportunity to make sure that we are staying grounded in some particular way, Dr. Campbell. Like we, we have to, 
Like, don't get bigger than your title, right? Or don't let your title, right, make you bigger than who it is that you actually are. Like, remain a humble servant in everything that it is that you do. Because someone is watching, someone is paying attention. How it is that you address people in one particular way or not is something that can impact them, that can impact the next person. Back to that domino once again. So just being able to have a great humility um, is something that I feel like that all leaders should have and to actively make sure that they are working on on a daily basis. Listen here, you, you trying to show out. He said, you gotta still be able to walk with Kings and not lose your common touch. That right, right. there. Ah, I love it. Listen, Mr. Jaron JD Doby. Yeah. This, this has been such, um, I feel like it's been such a useful, I was trying to find, I didn't want to use the, the term effective, but I feel like it's, it's needed, um, yeah. segment because there are, there is a, Unfortunately, there's still the stigma about men in general seeking therapy, but more importantly, black men, right. black men, um, and, and just, you know, the, the whole perception behind it. But I really hope that, um, the word that I wanted to use was insightful. This mm -hmm. has been a very insightful episode. And I, I hope that there is, uh, some person, um, mm -hmm. especially black men that's listening or watching this and they're mm -hmm. like, you know what? I really do need some help. And, and you might, you might, if you are that person and you are like, I need some help, but I need to know, you know, I need to know I can go to someone who I can identify with or who mm -hmm. I can, you know, I can feel safe with, mm -hmm. then I would recommend Mr. Jaron, uh, JD Doby for, mm -hmm. for his services. I mean, now, now you are, you are stationed in North Carolina still, I believe you're in Charlotte now, right? Yes, yes. In, okay. in Charlotte, okay. a, a little bit of everywhere. Uh, do a lot of okay. great work, continue to do a lot of great work in Greensboro. So Greensboro okay. will always be home and I'll always yeah. be making sure that I continue to impact um, that community. So I actively continue to work in Greensboro as well. I'm all over the place, Dr. Campbell. Okay. I, I really am, but I, I wouldn't have it any other way. Do you Do you also offer virtual services, virtual consultations in case there's someone who maybe they're living mm -hmm. in another country or, you know, maybe, you know, do you also do virtual consultations? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. I actually uh, do provide uh, virtual visits or uh, uh, virtual appointments and things of that nature. Um, it's important that people know that uh, a lot of times a provider, um, especially a licensed clinical social worker or a licensed clinical mental health counselor is able to provide treatment for those in, in the state or the country in which they are licensed. Right. So if I am, if somebody's in Georgia at the time, right, and I'm not licensed in Georgia and they join me for a session, right, and I identify that they are there, it's actually unethical for you to be able to provide services uh, mm. to a person because you are acting as if basically that you are credentialed in that state. So it's important wow. to make sure that you ask those kinds of questions when seeking a provider, you know, depending on mm -hmm. where it is that you live. Um, like I said, currently I am credentialed in the state of North Carolina, but I'm actively working at this time to be able to spread that. Right. Um, hopefully I, I do plan to be able to be credentialed like in every single solitary state uh, in the United yes. States and abroad, to be honest with you, because yes. I mean, being able to get on such great platforms like yourself, uh, like yours, excuse me, Dr. Campbell, like folks are are seeking me out and saying, hey, look, I'm here. I, I really like your style. Like, I really feel like I can identify with you. Like, can mm -hmm. you service me? And, you know, like it's, it's tough to be able to tell people no for those reasons. So I have to make sure that I take an opportunity to make myself more accessible to folks that are seeking help. Because I mean, that, that is just what my purpose is. Like, I, I know that I'm here for that reason to be able to help folks. So I have to make sure that I get myself in order, right? To make <laughs> sure that these things can happen. Absolutely. Okay, excellent. And so what would be the best way if someone is listening or watching this episode mm -hmm. right now and um, they're saying, you know what, I really, I need help. Like, mm -hmm. I need help. I don't want to call a hotline. I want to talk to someone that I feel like is a real person. Mm -hmm. I just watched this episode and I feel like I can connect to him. What right. is the best way for someone to contact you, to reach out to you? Right. Um, well, literally, you can take an opportunity to reach me uh, through my social media handles. I'm at Jaron Doby on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn. You can find me there. Um, connect with me in some way. I mean, it happens literally all the time. 
Dr. Campbell. Folks are, are taking an opportunity wow. to reach out to me and say, hey, JD, this is my story, right? Like I'm just being able to look for some help or, or being able to identify it. And, and of course, like time permitted, I take an opportunity to help as many people as I can, even if it's not anything that's personally benefiting me in any way. Like I want to make sure, right, that I'm a, a, a beacon of light or hope um, or resource yeah. to folks that are that are uh, looking to be able to to get help in some way without it necessarily having to to personally or monetarily benefit me. Um, mm. So I take an opportunity all the time. Folks are reaching out, like I said, through DM or inbox. Um, people are emailing me also um, at jaron.doby at gmail.com. Please feel free to mm -hmm. shoot me an email. Um, and I'll be more than happy to be able to help however it is that I can. Um, I do not have all the answers, but I pride myself on being a man uh, that is humble and being able to make sure that I uh, can identify supports in some particular way or resources that, me, that may be able to help a person. So it'll never just be, well, hey, I can do nothing for you. Like we'll make sure that we put our heads together to be able to make sure that someone gets what it is that they are looking for. So there's more to come. Please take an opportunity to follow me on, on those platforms um, and reach out to me either for collaborations because we got some exciting things, Dr. Campbell. That wow. Are, that are coming. I, 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 wish I mean, I, I wish I could. Oh, oh OK, God. I was about to ask you, you know, I was about to say, I mean, tell us what's going on. Let's no. know. But you just said you, you can't talk about them yet. Right. But I will come back. I, <sighs> I will. When, when the time comes, if, if you if you will have me back, I would love to come and, and share these exciting things on your platform. Um, Absolutely. People need to be able to hear these things. So I would love to do that. Absolutely. Of course, you you are always welcome in the lab, JD. Always thank welcome you. in the lab. Thank well, you. listen, I want to say thank you so much once again to our very special guest. We have our own clinician. We have our own mental health therapist in the community, a black man making moves. And obviously he has some moves that he's making that he can't share with us just yet. So <laughs> we're going to have to we're going to have to hang in there. Just hold on for a little bit longer. Yeah. Uh, and, and I'm sure the, the great news will be revealed, but I can't thank you enough for coming and really sharing your experience and your wisdom, mm -hmm. um, with us on mm -hmm. today. I mean, it's, it's, it's helping so many people. I know it is, even if mm -hmm. no one admits it, I know it is because the words that you've spoken and the experience you've shared, they mm -hmm. resonate within and hopefully, especially that, that, uh, those intrusive thoughts, hopefully if no one else gets anything else out of today mm -hmm. that when they begin to have intrusive thoughts mm -hmm. an intruder alert will go off in their mind and That's they right. will remember the words that you said and they'll begin to speak positively and make the right uh right make the right moves moving forward so thank you once again for coming on the leaders lab podcast today thank you so much dr campbell for having me this has been a great discussion well needed discussion um i would not trade it for anything so Thank you. Thank you so, so much for being able to have me. I would love to come back, um, but you I appreciate will. your time. I, I appreciate everything that it is that you are doing to highlight folks in the community that are doing well and all the great things that you are doing, taking an opportunity wow. to celebrate other people, y'all, celebrating Dr. Campbell. Because <laughs> she is the truth. Y'all need to make sure that y'all continue to support her, support her platform, wow. support her message, uh, because she is uh, you know, a great person also uh, doing great work. And then that makes it even better. I didn't even pay him to say that, y'all. I didn't even didn't. ask him to say any of that stuff. <laughs> oh, man. I appreciate you so much for that, JD. It's It's been my pleasure to have you on the show. And listen, in case you are, you are new to the Leaders Lab podcast and you have no idea um, how to connect with me, you can check the show notes below. And if you're watching the video version of this podcast, you can go and you can check the description box on YouTube. You can find not only my contact details and information, which is at Dr. Charity TV everywhere. Um, and also on Facebook, it is at Dr. Char at Dr. Charity TV page. Okay, that's the specific one for the page. But everything else is at Dr. Charity TV. Not only will you find my information there, but you will find the uh, bio of our special guest today. And you will also find the contact details for him. Listen, don't let another day go by where you are suffering in silence. You don't have to. 
Maybe, maybe you thought you did, but we are here to tell you today that you don't have to suffer in silence. There's someone here to help you. And hopefully this podcast brought you some hope. So thank you once again for tuning into this very special episode of the Leaders Lab podcast. And I'll see you guys next week in the lab. Thank you for listening to the Leaders Lab podcast. Visit our website at www.drcharitytv.com.